Now, we will be referencing two AISC standards, AISC 360, which is the main specification, and the seismic provisions, which uh, is referred to as AISC 341. So this main specification has uh, the requirements for all the steel in, in all steel buildings. Uh, it tells you how to connect, uh, calculate uh, connection capacity and has other stability requirements, et cetera. We'll really, we'll include some of that design because it does come into play, uh, but we're really, again, gonna focus on what the seismic provisions are telling us. These are additional requirements above and beyond the seismic provisions. Uh, there are additional member and connection limitations uh, you know, such things such as B over T limit, uh, ratios, limits, et cetera. There are also analysis requirements um, for different systems. Uh, specifically, as I previously mentioned, they are significant for special concentrically braced frames. And what's not listed here, but in some cases, the capacity of members, uh, the method for determining the capacity of certain members can be altered in the seismic provisions. Uh, the reason it's not here is that is not the case for the special concentrically brace frames. Really what the seismic provisions are doing uh, for these brace frames is uh, first of all setting the limitations on the members and stability requirements on brace length, etc. But really it comes down to I think the main part is the required strengths of members and connections. And that comes from uh, the analysis requirements and then specifically uh, for things like the column bases and column splices, the seismic provisions will tell you directly how to calculate the required uh, strengths. One thing I, I always point out when we're talking about this level of seismic detailing, depending on where you uh, are designing, uh, wind may or may not be a significant consideration, but uh, especially in Chicago where, where I am and, and uh, you know, in the Midwest, we're, we're certain places seismic detailing is required but wind is still can be a significant source of, of forces uh, one question we used to get a lot in the steel solution center is do i still have to meet all these seismic provision requirements uh, when it is wind loads that are driving my design and the answer is yes it, it does not matter how you get to the brace sizes uh, in, in a sense, it doesn't matter what forces lead to the sizes you're putting in your frames, those brace sizes are gonna drive the, the demand on the rest of the frame, and therefore it doesn't matter if the wind or seismic loads uh, are the ones that have uh, you know, control, if you will, the, the strength design uh, of, your, of your braces. I have not, in, in this example, evaluated the wind load. Uh, we're going to really just focus on the seismic uh, design. So the general design procedure for special concentrically braced frames is to first design the braces for the seismic load combinations uh, in, and then the additional requirements of chapter F, uh, F2, is the section that covers special concentrically braced frames. And that section puts limits on the uh, B over T ratio and the slenderness ratio uh, for braces. The main point being here is these are the typical design forces uh, from the ASC E7 that includes E that we're going to design for. Nothing special there. The next step is to analyze the frame uh, once we've selected the brace sizes, is to analyze the frame using the expected strengths of those brace members to determine the forces on the re remainder of the structure that come from earthquakes. So we're determining an earthquake load in the frame based on the brace sizes. And with those forces, we do combine them with gravity loads and then can design the beams and columns and their connections. Uh, considering all load combinations with the E sub MH, uh, which is the amplified seismic load or the maximum uh, load uh, from the step two that we just looked at. And again, we apply certain limitations to the beam and column members. We would then uh, probably proceed to the design of the brace connections first, even though it's listed last year, but uh, these, these steps are not necessarily uh, you know, set in order. And the brace connections are braced, the required strengths of the brace connections are based on the capacity of the brace. So we're not looking at uh, an 
analyzed uh, force here. We're not using load combinations. We're really just taking the brace force and designing those connections for that based on its capacity. Uh, similarly, the, the design of column bases and splices uh, has design required strengths that come from chapter D, which is a more general chapter, uh, D2.6, and uh, F2.6, which is specific requirements for special concentrically braced frames.